Now the next thing we're going to look at is the cardiac arrest situation and the rhythms that you get in a cardiac arrest. So let's clarify first of all, David, what do we mean by the term cardiac arrest? When we're talking about cardiac arrest, what we're talking about is a, a rhythm that would not provide a sufficient cardiac output. Um, so that can be one of four rhythms really, the v, VF or ventricular fibrillation, where the heart is going to fibrillate in the chest um, and there's no obvious pathway, so therefore there's going to be no um, mechanical output. Uh, so it's just like a fluttering of the, of the of, myocardium? Of the myocardium, yes. And so in that situation the blood pressure would be essentially zero? zero yes, the, 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 the heart wouldn't be able to create a cardiac output with that rhythm. Um, another rhythm that we may see is ventricular tachycardia and what's happening is when we saw the unifocal ventricular ectopics if they carry on and run on then the ventricles will go at a, an increase in rate so there'll be no filling time from the atria um, and of course this will cause hypertension and eventually unconsciousness. Is there any other types of cardiac arrest? We can have an asystolic arrest um, by a sister we mean there's no electrical impulse at all on the screen um, in, a, in essence it's a dead muscle. So when you bury someone there should be an asystole? Yes. Yeah. And the last one that we may see is what we call EMD, electromechanical dissociation. On the monitor we may see any rhythm at all. It, it could be a broad bizarre QRS, it may be sinus rhythm, but to go along with that, there's no cardiac output for some reason. Um, one of the reasons may be hypertension. The electrical impulse is still going on in the heart, but there's no circulating volume to be pumped around the body. So in the first three types of arrest you mentioned, the, the ventricular fibrillation, the ventricular tachycardia, and the asystole, the electrical activity that we see on the ECG screen is consistent with the kinetic activity that's going on in the heart, the movement in the heart. Yes, that's correct. What you're saying is in, in, in electromechanical dissociation, we see the electrical activity, which may appear, uh, uh, we may be seeing QRSs on, on the ECG, the normal electrical activity, but not, there's no movement associated with that. That's, that's what EMD is, yeah. So w we need to go, we need to diagnose that by absence of pulses, presumably. Yeah. Can, can we have a look at these rhythms on, on the screen now? Okay. So the first th one that we'll look at is ventricular fibrillation. So we, here we have um, a ventricular fibrillation. This is quite a coarse ventricular fibrillation. And as we can see, it's a chaotic um, rhythm of different amplitude. Um, and this is, would signify the heart fibrillating or fluttering within the chest. There's no real pattern there at all, is uh, there? No, it's, it's very chaotic indeed. Um, as time goes on, what we may see is more of a fine VF. So obviously the amplitude starts to reduce. We still see the chaotic pattern, but the amplitude is much less. And, and this would need to be treated by defibrillation? By prompt defibrillation. Providing the patient was unconscious and pulsed. With ventricular fibrillation, most patients will be very quickly. unconscious very quickly. Mm -hmm. So ventricular fibrillation. What was the next rhythm you were going to show? The next one we're going to talk about is ventricular tachycardia. As we can see here, this is ventricular tachycardia. To tachycardia, the rate's greater than 100. Um, and what we see is a broad, bizarre QRS. Um, because obviously this is coming from a rogue focus again within the ventricle, causing it to go at a great speed. People may well um, still have a blood pressure with this and be conscious. Um, they must feel pretty bad. They feel quite ill, very hypertensive. Um, and in that case, we need expert help and usually cardioversion of the, the rhythm. So ideally, you would give them some sort of anaesthetic and then... And then defibrillate them following that. If they were pulseless and unconscious, then again, it just needs prompt defibrillation. I've heard these complexes described as web complexes, wide, early, bizarre. Yeah. And this would be the normal sort of rate that you would get for ventricular... We would see a, a fast rate, anything over 120 beats per minute we would count as a ventricular tachycardia. 
and any more than three complexes together. I see. Right. So you could have a run, a salvo, a ventricular tachycardia that would go back into a sinus rhythm by itself. So the patient would just feel a bit dizzy, dizzy. Then, then come around again. Yeah. Or we can have this sustained ventricular tachycardia, which would cause them to be extremely hypertensive and quite often pulseless. Mm. So we looked at ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia. What was the third? The next thing we'll look at is asystole. This is just an absence of, of activity here, isn't it? It is, yeah. But what we can see is often if we have leads off, we would see a straight line across the monitor. Whereas, as we can see here, there's quite a swing along the baseline. But again, we need to check the patient as well as see what's going on on the monitor because it may be that the leads are off. I think that's a golden rule. Any time you're using any, any equipment of this nature, is it's a guide. Yeah. You've always got to look in your patient's face, check the patient's pulses. We always, we always say, treat the patient, not the monitor. Absolutely. But this, this is obviously looks like a, an asystole. The other thing that we would need to rule out is a very fine VF, because obviously the management would be slightly different. And, and the, what would an electromechanical dissociation look Well, like? as we said earlier on, electromechanical dissociation can take any form. But what we may see are these broad, bizarre QRSs. Not associated with any output, those. So, as we said, treat the patient, not the monitor. What we would do was check the patient for a pulse. Um, we would see this on the monitor, but there would be an absence of any cardiac output. It, it, it may well be a sinus rhythm that we see on the monitor with an absence of pulse. So you could actually see a rhythm that lo actually looked quite normal. Normal, yeah. But the patient would be pulseless. Yeah. And again, the management of that would be part of the advanced life support protocol. So that concludes our look at uh, cardiac arrest causing uh, dysrhythmia or arrhythmias, abnormal rhythms.